information, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, I just have it as Jones Group, so I don't know who's who's who or what property you want to talk about. So, uh, yeah, we'd like to talk about um, the 10 Rocky Hill Road and uh, the Whirlwind uh, Landscaping Company would like to purchase that in order to have their landscaping uh, company there. And so I'm sitting with Chris Baxter and his wife, <clears throat> Suzanne Baxter. So <laughs> if anybody has any questions, yeah, please fire away. Okay, well, there may be an issue there because it is zoned residential agricultural and a landscaping business is a business and is not permitted in that zone. So there's no residence on the site. So you can't make it a home occupation because you have to be actually living on the site to be a home occupation, a home business. So as far as the landscaping business moving there, I'm sorry to tell you that it probably can't be done. Well, what about, um, it was gonna be an ice cream place there. Was that approved? The ice cream place was part of a farm stand and it was uh, under state law, a farm and ice cream stand is considered a permitted use as a farm stand. And then what about, um, you know, chapter 48, section three, if they're going to be doing 25% of the business in horticulture and floral arrangements, things like that? Well, the good question, the uh, bar, no, not Barstow. Um, yeah, Harry Barstow, when he had his landscaping business, he ran it as a home occupation out of his house. It was a home business. Well, master landscaping, um, they're both very similar to what you want to do. They were buying local stuff. Um, they got a variance. They were actually kind of almost a grant, but they were running it out of their house for years. And they finally ended up going to the zoning board for a variance to run it out of their house, um, their location as a home business as well. So um, just because you purchase goods like that you've actually got to be growing them yourself part of it the way that I, the way i believe the law is written and so i mean I'm, I'm not trying to be mean here i'm just trying to tell you what the uh, the the, reg, the regulations are in hadley and it, it won't be a, it's not a permitted use you could try for a zoning variance but just be warned if you try for that when there was a farm stand there the neighbors, and I believe the neighbors are still the same ones living there, made a big deal about the farm stand being there and they tried to stop it. Mm -hmm. I so see. I don't think they're gonna be any more receptive to a landscaping business. Right. Any, any questions? Um, what would go there? What, what would be permitted? Because there's no place to really live there. Another farm stand is about the only thing that can go there. Okay. The only business use, you can build a house there. Right. Yeah, you could say, yeah, you could put a build a house there if, if the lot is big enough. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's that's something if, like I said, to make it a home business, you'd actually have to live there. Yeah. Any other questions? Not really. Not really. I think we're all set. Clear. Does anybody have yeah, any I'm, land? I'm, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Yeah. Any suggestions? In well, I mean, like, <laughs> they're all they're all expensive that's the problem <laughs> i mean you could buy it tear it down and put a farm put a house there and then be you could qualify for a home business if you really wanted to be at that site or, or where do you do you live in hadley now amherst amherst oh buy another house that are with a big lot in hadley and go for the home business home occupation the right. other uh, factor there is, and let me just go to that parcel that I think you uh, do not have enough acreage to qualify for the agricultural exemption anyway. Yeah. So three to five acres. Three, um, five acres, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It was worth a try. It's a beautiful spot. Um, appreciate your uh, time. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Iser.
Good evening, everybody. I'm Good here evening. this evening to submit plans for the 21 Lawrence Plain Road, very small subdivision. I sent a PDF of the actual lot plan, and I just want to make sure that I get everything else I need. Uh, it's been a while since we've done this, so uh, uh, I've got two sets of mailing labels. I've got two form Cs. Is there anything else I need to for paperwork to get to you? How many sets of plans do you have, Randy? Well, there's just one page. Um, so how many how many copies do you want? Well, the electronic copies are good for the planning board, but I think the uh, police chief and player probably each want a hard copy. So probably and, and, and the town clerk, so maybe three three hard copies. All right, so I'll I'll get I'll make six just so there's enough to go around. Okay. So six hard copies, two sets of mailing labels. Two form C's, anything else? I believe that is it. You're gonna go right for the definitive? Yes. Okay. Okay, I mean that should be it. Go okay, ahead. I'll I'll uh, put it in the planning board mailbox town hall tomorrow. Okay. And I'll I'll let you know when, when it's there, Jimmy. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll put a date and I'll let you know what the, the other fees are if there's any. Okay. Okay. Right. So can we can we set a date? Uh, want to try for December with Mr. Dwyer? Here we go. So December five is uh, you know a month out. The one problem I have with that is I know we're really crunched in here with trying to talk to Cancomia and do a public hearing. Um, I'd say December. Oh. You can push it out. I, that's fine. Whatever. Whatever you do, whatever you need to do. Let's do it the nineteenth then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it gives us a chance to uh, collect any other loose ends. That's fine. And do you want it at town hall, Jimmy, or do you want me to bring it to you? Um, why don't you bring it to me? Okay, I will so do I that. Get everything out. I can. I can sign it. And could get you let make sure everything's good okay all right thanks that's all i have for that next up is mr reedy thanks mr dwyer hi everybody um two items first one is uh a and r for two lots over on moody bridge road bill handrich's property uh, I had sent in to the planning board, I want to say it was Thursday or Friday last week of that ANR. Um, this is land which is not uh, part of the APR that uh, Bill had done. I want to say it might have been last year at this point. Um, I'm happy to share my screen if you want to take a look at it if you haven't seen it yet. I did send it around, but yeah, let's go ahead and um, do a quick share. Okay. What's the number on Moody Bridge, Tom? That's a good question. 50, I think. It's coming out of this. So if you can see my screen, uh, Handrich House down here, this land was part of the APR. Uh, this land was excluded. There's a lot of lines here. Sherman and Frederick had put this together. Sorry, Randy. Um, and it's this lot here. Lot three, and then this lot here, lot four. Those aren't where the bank is real steep on Moody Bridge. Is that correct? Good question, Jim. That Good was just question. Yeah. That um, I don't think so, but I can't tell you, Jim, definitively. Because if it's the real steep bank, then that's considered not accessible, easily accessible, and it would take a, well, illusory access right yeah and, and i think I even if a chance to go take a drive down there to see this i meant to so i'm i'm hesitant to sign this only because of that tom um let me how can we maybe do this there's no grading plan no there's not and that's what i was thinking mark is that i you know i wonder if 
you know, even, you know, it's, I think if it's steep, it's uphill, right? I don't think it's downhill, if if my memory serves. It's steep up, yeah, steep uphill, yes. Yeah. Which yeah, you could always cut like and retain. I want to say there's probably a 10 to 12 foot bank there. Okay, to do. If you would need to, I think you could probably cut and retain um, if you needed to. And I, I don't know that I reserved access off of here. Um, I'm not sure that I did. So I think access would have to come off of here. Let me see if I stop share and then maybe I can go to a Google. Um... Can you go to Google Earth, Tom? What I'm trying to do, yeah, Randy, exactly. Let me see and if I can. You know, to, you know how to do elevations? I know how to do the street view. I don't know that I know elevations. No. Well, if you take your cursor and put it where you think the top of the bank is, it'll give you an elevation. And then oh, if you okay. take it and put it at the at the road, it'll give you another elevation. It's down in the lower right-hand corner. Okay. It'll give you co uh, coordinates and elevation. Let me get to Big Brother Google has all the info. <laughs> all right, let me. Mr. Quinlan, do you know if that's at the high end of the bank or not? I do not. Okay. You're practically across the street. <laughs> <laughs> I know on the curve, it does get pretty steep. I used to run that. Yeah, that's just that I'm not sure which, which you know, the, the yeah. Right. Because it kind of goes down into a hollow and then it comes back up again. All right, so I'm looking at this the right way. This should be the house. This is the barn field here. And then it Where's looks the like it looks like the lots are in this general area here. Yes, I, I agree with that. Agreed. So then if I ran because I'm not as sophisticated as if I go down to there, so it looks like there may be some, Jim. Well, yeah, but it's, it's there, there's part further up the road, not so much there. I mean, it's like, it's almost a, a very steep. This has got a relatively, there's some, uh, how would I say this, reasonable slope there that you can actually climb up if you had to. Okay, it's not like a sheer wall as it as it is further back. Right. Yeah. yeah. Down down by the brook, it's really yeah. That bad. that's what I'm concerned. That in where those where the where the uh, foliage trees are, that's really steep and really. Yeah, that was my question. Where where yeah. is the brook? How far back? It shows on the plan, Joe. It's it's not cons It's not part of the two lots he's showing you. All right. All right. Let me. Uh... Yeah. And even oh, no. even if you ha had to do a switchback kind of thing, come at an angle and come across the frontage at an angle, you could. I'm sure you could uh, access over that stuff. Right. Yeah. I. I yeah. Well, it's three and four. So it seems now. like further south, right, right. The next lot down is where it really starts to get steep. Yeah. Right in through there. Uh, you can see the brook. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's where it's really steep. As you get further up, it's. It's more, it, I mean, there's a reasonable bank, but there's also enough room to put a, uh, like Randy said, uh, a, if you would, a, a zigzag driveway in there and overcome it. Okay. Okay. I'm good. Any other questions? What's the frontage on those? Uh, yeah, you have to do some math. So fortunately, I did them before because they've surveyors mm -hmm. just identified L4, L5, L6. So L4, L5, L6 is 225 here. Mm -hmm. And then L7, L8, and L9 is 206.18. And that's, they're over here. So you'll see four, five, six, add those three together, seven, eight, nine, add those three together. And that's what you end up with there. So. 200 feet, and I think it's the zoning district is 200 feet of frontage and 40,000 because I, I think it's in uh, uh, aquifer protection overlay. Yes, yeah, it is in the aquifer. Region. So 40,000 square feet plus the 200 feet of frontage. Yeah, so there are lots of plenty big enough and no frontage. Plenty there, yeah. Okay. Motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. 
We have a second. Second. Motion second. All in, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, you can Tom, you can bring them to either Joel, Bill, or myself. We'll sign the plan for you. Okay. And I think I owe you a fee as well because I don't think we had submitted anything. So um how much front did you have? Uh all together 225 and 206, so 431. You got another lot there too, don't don't you, Tom? Lot two? Or is um, that pre-existing? That's pre-existing. Yeah, they weren't looking to carve that off. That was through the original APR one. Call it thirty dollar filing fee, Tom. How much? Thirty dollars even. 30? I love Hadley. Well, thanks a lot, and thanks to Randy for the help as well. Um, second second item on uh, for me at least is uh, Paul Benjamin subdivision uh, at their place. Um, this was one. There's a there's a covenant on it. Some of the lots have been released, not all of the lots, and I'm not here asking for all of the lots. Um, there was a letter that was provided to the planning board, I want to say back in 2009 by an engineer certifying that everything was fine. Obviously, time has passed between 2009 and 2023. So I asked Paul, you know, thanks to Jim and, and Bill, uh, he talked to the DPW super and got a punch list, essentially, of what needed to be completed. And it's really for the town to accept it, even though that's not what we're asking for. We're just asking right now for the release of the covenant. And then in the future, likely, uh, we'd be back to ask for ultimately support for it to go to town meeting for the town to accept it. And so out of that punch list, um, there's three things that haven't been completed. One of them is exposing a water box, which was just paved up to. So it's just cutting it out and picking up the water box. Two is clean and repair catch basins and drain manholes. And I attached a quote, which was, I think I was a little bit surprised by the price because it wasn't very high and then uh, sweep the street. Um, Paul's already done some crack repair. He would do crack repair again in the spring uh, before he'd ask the town to accept it. So, so those are the items. These lots have been selling for, you know, recently and we've got it under contract for $180,000. Uh, so the last lot, probably the trophy lot, if you will, at the end of the cul-de-sac, we would put up as collateral and then ask for the, the balance of the lots, which haven't yet been released, to be released. And so, you know, ostensibly, that's at least $180,000. I think the, the quote for the drain manholes catch basins was a couple of thousand dollars. Even if you take double that, you know, you're at $5,000, the water box exposure isn't going to be much and then the street sweeping isn't going to be much either so we thought with 180 you were sufficiently collateralized should these items not get done and again this isn't for the town taking this is just for the covenant so, so which the, lot will remain a uh, lot 10 so the top coat has been put on was i put believe on. so yes probably some time ago too joe okay but they've been doing a good job of maintenance, kind of as they go, crack repair, uh, sealing it, et cetera. So this was a situation that when it was completed, it probably did come up to town standards. But because no one asked to have it uh, addressed at that time, it has deteriorated below town standards. So I'm OK with uh, releasing all but one lot. Uh, just for the record, Mr. Benjamin did ask the selectman to accept that as a town road before there was a house on it. And the selectman declined to put it on the warrant because there was no house on it. He says, we're going to accept a town road that doesn't have any houses, and they didn't want to do that. Makes sense. But that was a few <laughs> years ago, obviously. Yeah, and people are obviously paying attention. Randy brought, you know, his very small subdivision. Just, I would have to imagine it's close to, if not, you know, stone's throw from here. So 
kind of addressing the two newer members on the planning board. And uh, if this were under the old subdivision regulations, uh, we would probably have to release all the lots if these catch bases were, were up to stuff. But now we can hold one lot until it's accepted by the town meeting. So that's what we're doing. Thank you, Joe. Okay, Mr. Dwyer, you're making a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to release all but lot 10. I'll there second. A, there a second and second, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Great. Thanks so much, Bill. I can work with you on if you want us to, if you want me to draft that lot release, I'm I'm happy to do it because I think lot 10 had been released, so we're putting it back under covenant. So if you just send me an email, I'm happy to help however you want. Okay. Thanks, guys. Good seeing you. Yep. Uh next up is uh Britt McGrath. Hello. Um, I am coming from I own my Health Matters Fitness in Hadley. Just um popped up in October for uh the Mill Valley Suites there, I'm Unit C. And um I just wanted to ask permission to put two lawn signs out. They're 18 by 24 inches. Um, I can tell you what they say, but they're basically just bringing attention to the space being open. Um, and I'd be putting them out by the sign uh, post that's already out there. Where was this? So it's uh, Mill Valley Road, one Mill Valley Road in Hadley. There, are, you're going to add to the sign of, the signs. I'm, I'm, I'm not following what you want to do. That's okay. There. Yeah, she's talking okay. about lawn signs. Yep. Yeah, so two lawn signs that just have the little, um, it's not the vinyl A-frames. It's just like um, a sign and then it you put the metal pieces into it and then you can just stick it into the ground from there. How, how long would they be out there? Um, I would probably keep them out there until it starts snowing um, just to bring attention to the space. Okay. Um... We could give you, I'm not sure what we can give you permission. We could give you one temporary long, one permit to put out one sign, but I don't think we want to, we're not going to do two. Not, that's my opinion. Okay. Because uh, okay. you only have road frontage on one road, right? I have uh, Mill Valley and then I have Russell Street. Just we're on the corner there like this. Okay. I your your address is Mill Valley Road. That's where your business is. Yes, technically our entrance is one Mill Valley Road. Yes. Okay, um, and it's it's the way that road is even shaped. One road sign is visible from Mill Valley Road or Russell mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a problem with one temporary sign for like a month or two, but if it was permanent, we would say no. Okay. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't make it permanent. It's just gonna be there just to bring attention for. We opened in October, so I just wanted to bring attention to the space being open, and then we would pull it. Um, I can definitely pull it by December if that works for you. Anybody else on the board have questions, comments about that? Well, that's a reasonable, uh, I think, compromise, and I applause, applaud her for coming in and trying to be up front because there are a lot of signs going up now that the, the waving flags, I call them, they just stick them out there and uh, they're obviously not a permitted use. What's the dimension of it? 18, 18. by 24 inches. How much by 12 by 24? 18, 18 by 24. Or 18 by 24. So, so it's, it's three. The name, of the business? Yeah. name of the business you said? My Health Matters Fitness. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve one temporary sign, not to exceed 18 inches by 24 inches through December 31st, 2023. Second. Motion second, any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, thanks so much. Okay. I appreciate it.
Next up, Mr. Dwyer. Next up is, are they still here? Uh, yeah, just let me check something. Um, uh, okay, the, um, yeah, the next person in is actually with uh, PVPC. So uh, let me just take that. Uh, Tom Corbett's here, but I think that uh, you just wanted to see what uh, we talk about, about uh, battery storage. He was here. Okay. Um, everybody else I recognize as being either connected with PVPC uh, or with our next agenda item, which is a brief presentation from the Housing and Economic Development Committee on um, a proposed uh, housing forum. That would be Molly and uh, Justin Peeland. Okay, thanks, Bill. Um, so thanks for your audience tonight. I uh, just wanted to let you know that we um, did the same presentation in front of the select board um, at our last select board meeting. Um, again, a reminder, the Housing and Economic Development Committee <clears throat> were appointed by the select board, um, but obviously we have a, a pretty strong dotted line to the planning board as well. So as we've said in the past, we never want to get out in front of either um, elected board without without doing a check-in. So, so I think that's the, the goal tonight. Um, so Justin uh, is here with me tonight. And one of the um, items that we've been discussing for a while on the Housing and Economic Development Committee um, is you know, where do we go from here once the housing production plan was completed? Um, so I think uh, Jim uh, is certainly fully aware of, of this, but part of the outcome of the housing production plan included kind of recommended next steps. And one of those next steps was for the town to have an, um, and I want to emphasize educational forum um, discussing housing in Hadley. So uh, we've been working on coming up with an outline for that. Um, and again, you know, Justin did the lion's share of the work on this. So our housing and economic development committee um, has approved the outline. Um, again, it's gone to the select board. The select board is uh, generally um, or actually unanimously in agreement with the, the concept here. And we wanted to present that to you tonight. So if it's okay, Bill, I was going to turn this over to Justin. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize that my voice is a little hoarse today. Um, mm -hmm. If it's helpful, I can I can pull up the abstract that we wrote and present it to the planning board, um, or I could just talk through it. Would it be helpful to see? Why don't you pull it up? I think I did circulate it around to everyone, but uh, just okay. touch the high points. All right, bear with me. Um, I don't use Zoom all that often. Okay, let me know if you can see this. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, so as Molly mentioned, uh, what we're really doing here is reacting to uh, some of the survey questions from the housing production plan. Um, and uh, we mentioned this to the select board as well, but uh, that survey, I believe from what I've heard, uh, is has some of the highest response rates of you know, any survey that we've put out to date. Um, so it's it's pretty reflective, we think, of, of the general sentiment. Um, and of that, there was one question that asked specifically um, there's a list of, of options and asked them to rank the priorities for the town uh, and items one and two in this list, uh, improve regulations and zoning bylaws and provide housing to support all socioeconomic levels. Um, those are really things that you know, can't, can't be achieved without town vote, um, but item three, educate the public on housing issues is something that's well within our control. Uh, so the uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee kind of talked through what that means, um, and based on some of the survey responses, uh, we kind of provided this abstract of how we might envision this uh, forum to go. Uh, so basically, the, the proposal is to do a two-session forum, session one being largely information, um, and we would host it kind of as a panel style, uh, identifying particular experts in their fields to be able to contribute their opinions and, and facts and data. Um, and then session two, after people have had a chance to digest, maybe people who needed to watch it virtually online after the fact, 
uh, would be about a sort of question and answer session, uh, potentially moderated, um, some some format that might help to focus the conversation. Uh, so with this document, we kind of proposed an outline and then uh, highlighted in yellow are people that we had identified in the Housing and Economic Development Committee as, as potentially uh, best suited to talk on these issues, although this is still open. Um, this is very much an outline proposal, not an actual app excuse me, an actual outline. Um, so for the forum on the information starts with kind of an introduction, which we were thinking maybe Pioneer Valley Planning Commission could provide, um, which just kind of tells us like, why are we here? You know, the, the recap on the housing production plan, the survey responses and things like that. Uh, item two would be a overview of town government, which is kind of a recap from a previous forum that I believe the select board had held, um, but basically trying to just uh, quickly identify the process for um, town vote and you know, making changes to zoning, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the third item would be uh, hopefully somebody from the planning board, we've kind of put in bill here, um, would be to talk about the current zoning and zoning bylaws and the rezoning process, just to, it doesn't have to be an in-depth conversation, but just to kind of set the stage. Uh, and then moving down, uh, this is where kind of the meat of the presentation is. And this is to talk about, you know, some of the constraints and opportunities for developments in Hadley. And um, you know, we're, we are talking specifically about housing because it's one of the focuses of our committee, but the, um, you know, the, the content here really spans a number of fields economically, socially, and, and uh, you know, from a housing perspective. But we would uh, hopefully start with discussion about the master plan, um, you know, some of the findings from that plan, move into school system and enrollment, which is an area that we uh, had heard from a number of people as a, an area of concern. Uh, so the idea here was that we can have a superintendent potentially just tell us from you know, her experience what the situation is with the school system as it relates to uh, population and, and number of children. Uh, and then move into infrastructure and services, which uh, it was suggested that maybe the police chief or fire chief or DPW director might be best suited to talk about this. Um, but the you know the sewer comes up a lot when we talk about new developments. So this would be an opportunity to kind of outline what those constraints are and maybe what what some of the uh, opportunities or creative solutions that we're exploring might be. And then uh, business development and or business and economic considerations. Uh, this is kind of tied to. Some of the there's a relationship between you know housing availability and um, attractiveness to businesses and and there's a sort of a push and pull there that we want to try to address and Mark Howard has offered to uh, discuss these subjects um, you know, with his background in economics it makes sense to us um, and then the final comment or the final item here would be uh, social and community considerations which um, is a little, little bit of a broad conversation but we're trying to sort of focus in on, you know, housing access and equity and, you know, the different types of housing scales, different uh, barriers that there might be to staying in town, whether that's aging in place or potentially young families looking to relocate. Uh, and then uh, trying to talk a little bit about shifting demographics from some of the last census results. Um, and then the, the session two here, as we talked about, would be some form of moderated question and answer discussion. Um, but the idea here, and we stressed this with the select board, is that you know we want to try and create a, you know a session or a forum that's uh, just about education. It's about information sharing and um, trying to be as as unbiased as possible. We're not we're not trying to suggest solutions or or answers, um, but the hope is that we can provide enough information so that if and when any of these issues come up for a town vote, people have the information they need to make an informed decision. With that, I can uh, I can't read any chats, but if there's any questions, feel free to chime in. No, that sounds good. You can take it down. I uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just at what point? What do you mean by improve the zoning? Uh, like the zoning needs to be improved in what way? Well, that was one well, of that. The, that was one of the suggestions that people want uh, that was one of the responses to the housing production plan so this proposal isn't talking about that this proposal is doing the third part about education you, you said that you had a high percentage responding to the housing production plan survey what percentage was that 
I think it was like 257 responses or something like that. Uh, I put it in the out of, out of how many people that live in Hadley. I think we're what 5,000. 5, so I, I would there. say statistically that the response wasn't significant. No, and I, I actually do agree with that. And I, I made a comment to the select board about, you know, how we engage with our residents. But I, I think from what I, this is just what I've been told, I don't know this for sure, well, is that the 276 people is a, a high number of a response rate for something like this in Hadley that in other surveys. But you should, you should have much. qualified that to say that in spite of that, it was not a significant statistical response. Correct. Well, isn't he saying that you know, for this kind of a not, it, you know, it's not like an election when we might get 1,200. No, you can't, you can't base policy on 200 out of 5,000. Okay, that's my point. Well, this yeah, isn't, my, we're not talking making, policy. Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about policy. We're talking about just educating the public. And I and think I, this is all about, I think this is all about policy, but that's my opinion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we are we are we are trying our best to make sure that this is unbiased and you know fa as factual as we can make it. Got it. Um, as an example, we our committee had met with the superintendent to ask some of the questions about school enrollment and whatnot, and and even we had learned some things from that conversation that I think we had all made assumptions about. So um, the hope here is that we can dispel myths and maybe provide enough information for people to make informed decisions. Well, my opinion is to go up, go up. We just heard uh, Tom Reedy say that a building lot in Halley is going for $180,000. <laughs> Enough said. So we're just looking um, really tonight just to, to ask the planning board um, just, you know, to allow us to continue. The idea would be to uh, I think right now we're talking about maybe um, a late January, early February timeframe for this. Um, and again, as <clears throat> I'm just noticing that Ken Comey is on the call. We threw his name on there as a guest speaker. And of course, we haven't even talked to Ken about it yet because we didn't want to get in front of the elected boards. But uh, so again, we can we can work on who the speakers are and the exact content, but we're just looking for agreement in principle. And if there are any um, is any opposition to having an educational forum. Obviously, we want to hear that from you. I'll make a motion to support further development of a housing forum to be presented by the Housing and Economic Development Committee. And I would second it. Motion and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah, time. thanks very much for your time. Go West. <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, Al uh, I, I, oh, sorry, I apologize. I overlooked Allison Ibbotson. Hi, good evening. Hi. Can you? Hi. Uh, I'm back with uh, the Homewood Suites um, revised uh, design for the signage for the wall sign. Uh, we shrunk it to the 64 square feet. And that was for which place? Uh, Homewood Suites. Okay. At 340 Russell Street. That's the sign on the front of the building? Or... That is correct. Yep. What was the address again? Uh, I think it's 340 Russell Street. 340. We have a picture of the sign by... We did get one in. I sent it around, but if can you share your screen? I or shall I try not, to find it? Uh, I don't. Let I have see. it right here. I don't know if you guys can see. I don't have it on my my phone. Yeah, I recall it calculated. The sign is sixty four square feet. That's what. Yeah. The, yeah. All right. Uh, we original we originally had it at sixty nine point two eight, um, and we brought it down to sixty four square feet to meet the regulations. That that faces Russell Street. Or that it, it is the south elevation. Let me see if I have it. Is 
Yeah, I have it. Uh, hang on a second. I'll uh, let me or share. Or is that in the courtyard? Yeah, it's pretty far back. Um, I mean, does that, that does that face the Aldi's parking area? I think that's right, Jim. Yeah, I think I believe that does. Okay. So the two doors right below to the main entrance, correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay, so that faces the Aldi parking lot. That's why I just want to I just want to verify where it is located. That's all. Yeah, of course. I'm thinking that actually faces east, but I could be wrong. It's it's yeah, facing. That's the it's... Yeah, that is where the Aldi's parking lot is, and, and theirs as well. Well, it says south elevation which would face, wouldn't the south elevation face? It's facing Russell Street, but it's like, yeah. it's behind another building. Oh, really? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what no, the building I, is right there in front. I think that's facing Chipotle, isn't it? The face is rough, face is south. Yeah, yeah. face is south. There's Chipotle and Firestone before yeah. you even get there. Okay. And um, so this is actually the back side of the building. You go around to the you go around to the right and you get into the, the courtyard aspect of it. Right. right. And that's where the entry is. That's where the entry is. So this is uh, South facing. This is the, the this facade is more, that, yeah. that people see. Right. From Route 9. It's more like the South flank. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Okay. Any progress, any progress with that Verizon? Uh, I guess you're just representing the signs. <laughs> just yeah, I, I don't have any knowledge about Verizon. Yeah. Thank you guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Right. Thanks. We to the public hearing now, Mr. Dwyer? Yes. Okay. I will read the announcement as it appeared in the newspaper. The Havoc Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, November 7th, 2023, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of in green gardens at 243 Russell Street for special permits, site plan approval and business use in aquifer. Said business is a landscaping business. Plans are available by emailing planning at Hadley at ma.gov um, or to see the town clerk published twice in the newspaper, September 16 and 23. And because there's probably quite a few people on this thing, I would, uh, say that anybody that wishes to speak, please be recognized by the chair before you speak. And the way it'll work is the town boards will have first dibs after the presentation to make comments, and then we'll open it up to anybody um, else on the Zoom call and everybody will get a chance to be, be heard. And you can speak obviously more than once or twice. Okay, um, Mr. Viano, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dwyer, would you be able to please bring up the um, the plans that I um, submitted to you? Okay. Let me see what I can do here. The Russell Street number again? It's 243. 243, See what I have here. So I'm going to play with this a little bit to make it fit. Um,
Okay, let me see if that, see how that works. Perfect. So right. this is on its side, so it'll fit better in the uh, available screen. The um, Russell Street is on the right of the page. Uh, this is the north side of the lot. This is the south side of the lot. Okay. Yep. So, um, so just introduce myself again. My name is Steve Viano. I'm the owner of In the Green Gardens. Um, our company is a um, landscape uh, design and installation company. So most of our work is, um, is or 99% of our work is done um, at our customers' houses. Um, the I'm asking for a site plan um, review and approval here um, for us to be able to add some bulk material bins across the, um, the backside of our lot there. So that would be about 950 square feet. Um, those bins will allow us to be able to um, maintain um, piles of, of, um, of various materials that we use, such as, um, or notably in those bins, we're hoping to be able to keep um, three quarter inch crushed stone, which is an aggregate, um, three eighths crushed stone, mulch, and then loam. And the mulch would be undyed mulch as well. Um, so what that would do is that would just allow us to increase the efficiency of our, of our crews and be able to save us time. Um, on the, uh, these bins here, we don't plan on going any taller than the fence. We also don't plan on um, stacking material any taller than that either. Um, those bins would be made of, um, of concrete uh, bin blocks. So it's a non-permanent structure. They would be just set onto um, compacted base material um, just to give them a little bit of structure and rigidity. And um, all those blocks are interlocking. So there's, um, there, there's uh, no problems with having to worry about them falling over or anything like that. Um, and that would just be all for, um, for in-house use of the business. And um, I believe that's really all that we're looking to add um, here. And um, I'm open to, to any questions or comments. Where will you be parking your vehicles? The vehicles, so we only have three three trucks so um those we'd also be able to park inside the the fenced area on the asphalt because right now they're parking in the front yard on the side of the driveway we we do just for, just for ease of access but then we can begin moving those into the back because i mean you're normally granted you may have a, a bit of a compacted site in front because you lost some frontage when the from the taking but the normally front yard parking is kind of reserved for like cars and and stuff like that. If you if you need to you need to get those trucks out of your front yard because if you can't put them in your backyard where they should be, then I question if the site is adequate for what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely are able to to bring them into the back there, and um, we are working on uh, acquiring another lot and in, in a different town as well for um for any heavy equipment storage or for, for some of our heavy equipment storage to serve as an overflow for this lot if um if they were in between jobs or something like that yeah what do you have for equipment right now you said you have three trucks yep so i have um two dump trucks and then one um one regular truck like a pickup truck okay and then everything else is on on site 99 percent of the time and your trailers are how long uh, my longest trailer is 14 feet long. How do you, how are you going to load the uh, aggregate on? You have a tractor there? Yep, we would just have a machine on site, um, you, either a um, like a two yard loader or um, or a skid steer, but most likely it would be a loader. Where will that be parked in the evening? In the, we'd also be able to park that in the back. Outside? Yep. Yeah, I don't have any covered storage. That's uh, that's that's tall enough for that machine. What All is, right. what is, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. No, what no, is no. the status of the existing fence? What is, it's a st stockade and is that six feet? Yep, that's a six-foot stockade fence. Um, it definitely is a little bit older, but though it um, 
it, it is there. Is and there has been some repairs made to it. I'd call it decrepit, not older. <laughs> the uh, what are the dimensions for those uh, big uh, blocks that will be housing your material? Yep. So those blocks are four foot by two foot by two foot. So they weigh approximately twenty four hundred pounds a piece. How far off the uh, the property line will they be located? Over the property line uh, will be approximately ten feet on the um, on the rear of the property, and then it would probably be approximately five feet on the um, or proposed five feet um, off of our um, the that would be our uh, the west border, which would be the one um, to the top of the the picture. That's so good. We, that would. The question is, will those blocks be qualified as structures? If it, if indeed they are structures, uh, I think the side yard set uh, setback is going to have to be 15 feet, and the rear yard is going to have to be 40. What so, could be an accessory structure? That would be 15 and 15. What constitutes a structure? Well, that's that's, that's the question. Yes. And the, the question is. It varies all over the place, Mark. Uh, one of the, a swimming pool, believe it or not, is a structure. And That's... even it, it, it cannot uh, interfere with the side or rear lot dimensions. So that's, this is gonna be a question. These are big, big blocks. But in essence, they're kind of like Lincoln logs. Yep. They fit together like Lincoln logs. You're right, but they're considerably bigger than you'd see any Lincoln log. Mm. These are these these do these do interconnect, right, Steve? Yep. So they interlock. Um, there's lifting hooks in them, and they have um, there's a ridge that runs down the center of them, and right, that's right, what no. uh, the weight of those block is what holds it together. So there's no adhesives or anything like that, or no uh, no footing that those are tied to. They actually use these blocks in uh, as retaining walls in uh, salt buildings. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, you could also argue that he's basically putting a very sturdy fence because his current fence doesn't, you know, hold the materials back. So he's almost building them like a sturdy fence to withstand the lateral pressures of his his materials yeah i agree yeah a lot of this has to do with the fact that it's frankly unsightly right now and if we saw a good fence there that made it attractive to the neighbors i think that would be helpful and in putting the blocks into can also warrant um improving the fence or painting the fence or doing something to, to help improve that um, I don't own the property. I'm only renting the property. But though, then if I was to put up the the blocks to be able to then hold the material, then I would be able to um, definitely make sure that there's that they wouldn't have to worry about any collision into the fence with the machine or any branches or anything like that. Say. But the uh, you the the box the, the blocks that are going to be closest to the fence are obviously they could be moved the whole system of storing material could be you uh, moved more towards the middle of the uh the whole lot mm -hmm. could they not yeah i mean you, you could if you consider this a structure well, so it would be it'd be considered an accessory structure which would be 15 foot side yard and 15 foot rear yard setback well, the, the purpose of a structure is probably not for us to define structure, right. but the reason for uh, side yards uh, setbacks is so that there would be accessibility to keep it clean and neat and not interfere with the neighbors. So uh, I think that was kind of the original purpose of side yard setbacks. Uh, and okay. Well, this he was, is if he was with the uh, the spirit of the law, but maybe not the letter of the law. I mean, if he's got a ten foot clearance now, I don't think it'd be too much to move the whole thing over to the 
easterly five feet, maybe to get that 15 foot. Yeah. I've got okay. two, two questions. Uh, what are your planned hours of operation? Uh, planned hours are between, we would be loading between 6.30 in the morning and maybe five or six o'clock at night. Um, but that wouldn't be constant because I only do have two trucks. So it would only be if uh, if I was loading for the next day or at the morning of the day. And at one time you did want to have uh, some calcium chloride storage. Do you use your trucks for plowing? So I do use my trucks for plowing. Um, all of our salt is um, for this year. We're, um, we're doing only sub work. And uh, part of my subcontract, I made sure that all the salt is is provided and stored on site by um by the by the prime contractor. So we will not be storing any salt there. Okay. And what about the other structures? There's a dwelling and a garage. Are you using those for your business? So the garage is being used for the business. Um, what that does is that essentially just stores any fittings for us or whatnot. And, um, and that gives us a place to work on equipment outside of the weather. Um, and then the building in the front there is a, is a dwelling right now. That's where, where I'm staying. I'm not leaning towards viewing this, interpreting this as a structure accessory or, or other, I, you know, I, I think it can be easily taken apart. It's not like a retaining wall that's poured in place or or tied back with the. Uh, you know, so I I'm seeing it, and that's just I'm not an attorney and I don't play one on TV. But I just with the limited knowledge I have, I'm thinking of it more as a improvement to to the fence to contain his materials. So. I see it as an improvement so that the fence could be maintained and that would help with the offsite image. I don't, I guess what I don't know if I can ask is will the fence, to, to what level will the visual fence be improved or fixed or maintained or how is it now? I haven't walked it to see how well it's been repaired. I think we've gotten some pictures. Excuse me, go ahead, Bill. It hasn't been. I drove by, I drove through the uh, adjoining parking lot this afternoon, and the, the fence is completely collapsed in the rear. Can we ask if that will be repaired? If these are, I mean, can that be contingent? You may certainly ask that question. Yep, I can make that contingent. And it will be, what's the decision? That yeah, yes, I can um I can repair those those rear fence panels as uh, as contingent. Now, what, about all the, what about all the debris that's on the site today? You got big boulders and piles of dirt and all kinds of stuff there. Yep. Um that's what we're yeah, working on being able to to screen and sort that. So then um, we can properly get rid of any boulders that are in the dirt. And then we reuse, we reuse that dirt on our client's properties. Is that, is where are you bringing the dirt in? Where, where are you bringing the dirt in from? Um, that's just from surrounding towns, from projects that we've been working on. Uh, that's usually, it's mostly um, like when we rip out shrubs or things like that, it just gets uh -huh. shaken off of the roots. So then we're able to dispose of it at a, at a wood yard where they use a, a horizontal grinder machine. Um, and those machines can't get dirt in them. So we're not able to, um, to, to essentially I have to be able to make sure that, that I send them the cleanest material possible. This, uh, the, the, Mr. The, Quinlan has his hand up. Is this an ongoing thing you're going to be doing there? I don't plan on doing that now. Um, I, we, if we needed a spot to be able to, um, to transfer trucks or something during the day, we, we have used it in the past as that. But though, um, in being able to really just straight store material here is really what we're looking to be able to move the place towards. I mean, the debris that you got on your site right now was way more than from digging up somebody's shrubs and bringing them to your property. You got what looks like side pieces of sidewalk and foundations and boulders that are probably as big as uh, twice the size of a car engine there. 
Mr. Quinlan. Yes, I, I don't think this is a proper um, site plan. I mean, the, I've, I've been out there many times and I've talked with Steve a few times. Um, there's a container, storage container, which would need your approval on the, um, I guess it'd be the eastern southern corner. Um, there's been a huge, I'm assuming that's a soil screener there. Um, the fence has been four to six months just over with all this debris. It looks like a bomb went off there over onto the other neighbor's property. And I, um, this isn't a, there's a lot more on site here than what's on this plan. And we had talked about that, you know, you'd have to approve that container along with, you know, the screener. I don't know how, how noisy that is for the neighbors and things like that. If that's been there for months um, as well. I guess that'd be my concern that this isn't a, you know, proper site plan of what's been there for at least four to six months. Well, the good news is it. Can, can, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Viana. Can you explain what's going on there today? Because what what you're presenting and what you're doing don't match. Something that I would like to point out too is that so past the fence line there, so about 15 feet past the fence is still the the property that I am renting over there, um, or here. But though um, there is, uh, it's a truck body that um, I'm not using the or actively using that to store anything i did plan on putting it back onto a, another truck um in the future but though those plans have changed so i am working on getting rid of that body because mr quillen did tell me that we weren't supposed to have that in hadley without any approval um that's actually going to a to a snow site in a different town um to be able to store snow blowers for us um and then the um we're part of why I wasn't able to do much in terms of uh, in working on the site here was I was waiting to definitely become able to, to come in front of the board there to have a plan together because I didn't want to necessarily be be working towards a, a goal that wasn't very clear. Well, working towards a goal is one thing, but having a, a debris yard is another thing. When will Can the debris I be gone? No, uh, uh, I'm planning on within the next within the next two weeks. I can be able to make sure I can take care of everything. Okay, uh, Jim, I'll tell you uh, what. We have a comment from uh, the health department, Ben Lippum. Yep, just a minute. We're gonna we're gonna listen to everybody, but there is no way a decision will be made tonight. I intend to make a, a motion to extend the public hearing for two weeks, which will be the first week, which will be the. November 21st, and I would expect your yard to be cleaned up so that we can talk about more appropriate things on that night, like what the yard actually looks like. Mm -hmm. And if it's not cleaned up, um, the building inspector or zoning enforcement officer may, I hate to be mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to be straight out honest. I don't want to be anything else, but uh, the building inspector, zoning enforcement officer may be directed to issue you a cease and desist order if it's not cleaned up. We're not going to fool around here. We got to get this moving because you've been, from what I understand, from the building inspector, zoning enforcement, Mr. Quinlan. There, he's been very lean in trying to get you to clean the place up. Um, well, we got to move forward. Okay, Mr. Mr. Littman. Thank you. Uh, so oh. I had received a complaint today about the uh, location uh, being used as a um, uh, a solid waste site. Uh, I went out there uh, today and took a look at it, and it did appear, again, based on appearances, uh, that the site is being used for unwanted or discarded solid waste from a commercial activity that is being stored or processed. And as of tonight, a uh, gentleman here uh, stated that it's being used uh, for sorting, and that is a, a, a process. So it's possible that um, it is um, being used for uh, as a solid waste site, which would require a permit for that. Um, so you can add health as uh, a department that is concerned with the use of the site at this time. Ad additional, uh, you know, work would have to be done to make a determination. But at this point, we there is a concern uh, for for us as well. Okay. Uh, we also have from the Conservation Commission, uh, Kayla. Yeah, I'm Kayla. I'm from the Hadley Conservation Commission. Um, while there are not wetlands on your site, there are mapped wetlands near and around your site. So the Conservation Commission would like to see 
site plans to determine if they would need further permitting for the work that's being done on the property. Any other comments from town board before we open it up to the public? Well, the good yeah. news is you can probably drive your bicycle, you can ride your bicycle to work. It's a joke. <laughs> so I, I, I do have one, one concern in here, and that is whether the uh, this processing and screening of gravel is an allowed use in the business district or should be restricted to the industrial district. And that is something I think uh, we, we need to flesh out a little bit more. Well, if he gets rid of the place and to be cleans the site up in two weeks and it's gone, then, and he's only going to be storing mulch and stone and bark on there, there won't be any, he's from what he says, there will no longer be any screening of debris, correct? Yep. Sorting, whatever you want to call it. So get rid of what you have and that issue will be a non-issue in two, after two weeks. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. So if we're going to get a revised site plan, and as Kayla asked, it should show mapped wetlands uh, in adjacent properties, I'd like to also see a scaled representation of where his vehicles are parked. Um, I think maybe if you moved your piles, as was mentioned earlier, more toward the center and you parked on either side, the vehicles would protect the fence. Because I feel like one of the problems here is we're not happy about how the fence looks, but it, you can't, if you keep piling against the fence, you can't, it's not worth fixing because you, your materials keep breaking it. So, you know, instead of waiting till we do or don't approve this, these blocks, maybe you move your piles toward the center and try to park closer to the fence. Just my suggestion. Good, good suggestion, Mark. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else from any town board? Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Public, you're all, who's, who wishes to speak first? Lisa. Hi. Um, I'm his neighbor to the west, and I guess one of my concerns is that one of his dirt piles was like, 20 feet high and the weeds were probably maybe 25 feet high and that was right near where uh, the drains are so all of my you know I have a drainage system everything goes in in the catch basin and so it was almost like having all that dirt there changes the um you know level of his property so all the dirt's running into my catch basin because he's right on the fence so uh, I am concerned that, he, you know, when he's there, if he's actually going to stay at the level of the fence, because, um, you know, the way it is right now, it's like he's changed the whole elevation of his property. And I have this dirt from I don't know where running into my catch basin. And I guess one of my other thing, concerns is um, the dumpster, like in the front of the building, I know, um, you know, we always have them fenced in and he's got, I mean, he's got one in the back, but he's got one right in the front. So it just doesn't look very neat or clean over there besides the fact of what's going on and the the dirt sort of sorting out pretty much happens, you know, for hours at a time. It's it's pretty loud. Um so you know, it's just you know, I have a medical office next door and it, you know, I know Paul has, you know, clients in the back doing massage and it, it's pretty loud if you know, I don't know if it's allowed or not, but um Certainly, you know, piling all the dirt. And then I was there power washing my building and he was blowing all the dirt and it was sticking to my building as I was power washing it because there's just dirt everywhere back there. Um, there there used to be grass and, and some pavement, but now everything's just uh, dirt and sort of, um, I don't know, building materials and concrete and uh, a bunch of other other materials. So um, I, I guess my concern is about his drainage is, you know, where is his water flow going and does, is he going to have a drainage system like uh, Paul and I do to keep our, our water on our own properties? Thank you. Very good point. Something that, something that I would like to point out as well is that on the other side of Lisa's building, 
uh, Marion Excavating has been working on the uh, the new hotel that's going up on the far side. And they also do have a, a jaw crusher in there as well, as um, they're also working on on doing similar activities that, that we do at our site here. Well, that's probably under a construction permit, but yeah. Yep. Are you saying that her building is getting dirty from that construction and not yours? Well, I'm saying that um, that there is a lot of construction going on in the area, so it, so it can't be solely directed at me. Am I hearing that your processes are going to change and that that yard will just be used for storage? Is that what I was hearing earlier, that the processing of, of gravel will happen somewhere else offsite? That's what my plan is. Okay. Yep. Okay. But when you say a plan, is the plan in your head, or do you have a written plan? That, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't plan on on uh, on screening here. Um, I just ended up having material here, so I did have to get that screened. But though, um, but though that that screener that I do have here is a mobile screener, so it is it is made to go to my client sites, and we do drag that around to client sites when it's needed. So we are able to now screen on site. Anybody else? Have a timeline for when you're going to not be screening on this site? I'm hoping to, uh, that that would be part of just cleaning up over the next two weeks is getting rid of that and then we should be done with it. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. You know, you want to make God laugh and tell him what your plans are. Okay. <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, my name is Paul Zaradnik. I'm the owner of 245 Russell Street, uh, known as the uh, Hadley Park Plaza. And I'm very concerned about the uh, storm drainage system. Uh, the the uh, runoff that comes off of his property onto mine flows right onto a catch basin, which is only about eight feet, 10 feet off of his fence, and then flows underneath my driveway right into a wetland. And uh, I think uh, if his plan, if he's going to continue to go forward with this, should include a storm water drainage system that, that can contain all the runoff that comes off of his site, um, you know, with, with the materials that he's had historically in the last two years that he's been there with the uh, soil that comes in that looks like it's heavily contaminated with construction debris, asphalt, concrete, metal, shingles, wood, that sort of thing. I don't know what's in there, but I don't want it in my, on my site, and I don't want it going into the wetlands. I don't know how much contamination may have already leached into it, but I think that uh, I would like to see the uh, Hadley uh, Planning Board request that a storm drainage system be installed. Lisa has one on her property. I spent a lot of money putting in a drainage system um, on my property. It's there to protect the aquifer. And it's a it's a it's a good thing, and I'd like to see that included in his plan is is a good stormwater drain system done by a registered engineer. Because I'm concerned about that that what, the runoff that comes off of his property. He's great. He's uh, cut the grade down around inside, and it all goes right towards onto my property now. And I'm very concerned about the potential pollution that I could be sustaining on my property now. Um, the noise level also from the uh, screener is uh, very disrupting to my tenants. I get a lot of complaints from them. I have 32 offices there and it's a, it's a nice quiet office building and they complain about it. Um, his screener runs at about 87 decibels. That's way more than the 45, it's acceptable. Um, and so I'm glad to hear that he's going to get that off the site. Um, but I do would like to see a request for a good storm drainage system put in. And the other thing is uh, the zoning bylaw does say that or it has a request in there that there should be a 15 foot buffer zone 
um, around the, the perimeter. And I would like to see that buffer zone installed and a fence uh, and a buffer zone with uh, vegetation uh, to help keep down the noise and the screen, um, all the, the equipment from my building and my, my tenants. Um, so that's that's my feelings on it right now. Okay. Mr. Viano, on the rear of the property, is that all paved or is that basically just dirt? How much was paved and how much is how much was grass when you moved in? Um well, I moved in in the middle of the winter, so it was still um it was it was all dirt. But though um but though it's only paved. So there's so on the on the if you're looking at the property from the front the left hand side um it's probably about 5 feet to the fence that isn't paved and then it going from the back of the asphalt pad to the fence that's probably um that's probably that's 15 or no it's 20 feet and then just past that is um is another 10 to 15 feet to the property line okay so the rest you of said it, you don't excuse me you said you don't own this property you rent this Mr. Sardinsky, please yep. wait I'm sorry I'm sorry Oh, that's right. It's public time. <laughs> um, so that the most of the most of the rear of the property was grass or something. You're saying? So the rear pad, the rear past the fence is all is all grass. Inside of the fence was was not grass. It was not grass. Mm -hmm. It was just dirt. That was all. That was that was dirt or paved. Uh just dirt. It wasn't paved. The paving, the it's paved in all inside the fence though. So. 15 so 20 feet to the back fence and then along the right hand side of the property is 10 feet to the fence that's unpaved that's just dirt then everything within that area though is all paved okay okay my, mr sars no he just said he, he rented the property you don't own it yep yeah i rent the property i don't own it well okay. it looks like you got some business decisions to make whether or not Making improvements on a leasehold is prudent. So when, yeah. when did you move into the property? I moved into the property in February of 2021. Okay. Because we can go to the uh, assessor's office and get aerial photographs of what the property looked like to the rear before that. And depending how much changes have been done, um, changing, I don't know, elevation so much, but as much as parking and non uh, impervious areas, if you would, then um, yeah, if you change the drainage profile of the property, then you definitely need to be addressing catch basins and putting something in to uh, retain your own water. Because probably used to be sheet flow going off to the rear of the property and, in, in, and infiltration was probably a big part of it. But if the property has been altered and it's no longer being infiltrated, then um, yeah, you need to do something and address drainage so that it isn't going on to the neighbor's property. Is, is this qualified? Are we doing a site plan review here? Yes, we are. Okay. And the, the qualification- we're doing, we're doing site plan approval, not review. Okay. But- uh, <laughs> I, I got the difference. <laughs> the, uh, the the peer review probably is it should come in the in the play here uh, with with drainage and the concern for drainage and uh, originally when we, we thought and, that the property wasn't altered and we were weren't going to need a peer review because it was basically one for one but it, as it's as it may be things have been changed from what we thought. Exactly right. That's that's what I'm I'm thinking too. So I have a question for you based on what uh, Mr. Zaradnik said. Uh, construction debris. How does that fit into your business plan? You're talking about landscaping. Yep. So we do we do hardscaping. So we'll do like um, if we pull out like an old walkway or something like that or patio, then we uh, then we'll sort out the bricks then and we'll get rid of the bricks appropriately. And we'll get rid of, and then we'll we'll screen the loam. Is is the way was the way that we've been operating. He mentioned shingles. Shingles. I don't think I've ever brought in any shingles. Uh, 
I'm looking at the Google Map aerial view. It looks like quite a collection of, I don't know, I, I don't want to call it debris, but all up against the fence line. So I don't, yeah, I definitely want to see how your storage goes and how your vehicles go. It sounds like you're going to be changing the use. Like maybe you were getting away with uh, more than we thought if it was a landscaping material storage. It was more, as we said, processing, which is not appropriate, I don't think. You know, the, the site plan approval we're working on is for a landscaping business. And that's why I said before that we'll give, he said he could clear it up and clean it up in two weeks. We'll give him the two weeks to make the place basically like his site plan, a bare lot with get rid of the debris and whatever else is back there, the storage trailer or the, or the body, whatever he calls it, and the screener, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll move on at that point. Should we address the uh, drainage issue? Yeah, well, I, what I want to do is I want to go to see the assessors and get a map of uh, four years ago, see what the property looked like. And if property has, another thing, there's so much junk on the property right now, we can't even tell where the grades are. Um, so I, I am I Sorry. mean, the, the, the place is a disaster. I am taking a look at from Google Earth at the site. Unfortunately, the imagery here is shows it uh, October of 2018. So it's uh, uh, five years old. That, so would that, be exactly, that would be exactly what we're looking for. What did the okay, property well, look like five years ago? Okay, well... Uh, Funny, I can help. That would be perfect. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. So you see down here at the bottom, it says imagery date 10 4 2018. And so in 21. Okay. So this would have been hasty fence, I'm assuming. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the property was pretty much black topped all the way almost to the fence by the looks of it. Um, like that's almost, dirt in there. A little bit of dirt here, probably yes. underneath those guys, underneath the, to the right of the property too. It's probably close on whether it even has 20% green. That's another good point. Yeah. Especially with the taking now. Well, if you if the if the if you take the stuff off of the dirt back then, and the front yard, that probably was twenty percent. Probably was, even though it was dirt, it could be green if they planted the dirt there. That that would be my guess. Um, but yeah, that's all hasty fence stuff. And then I wanted to point out too that in the center of the image there, there's two um, two storage bins, and that's actually what we're proposing to uh, to install then along the back of the fence is uh, those bulk material storage bins. Is that what this is? Yep. And those were made out of the same material at the time that Hasty had the lease here. They probably didn't come before us to request permission they did not and uh to that i have to credit uh our current building inspector who is doing a much more effective job of enforcing change of use as a trigger for site plan approval the uh that was not a uh, high priority for his predecessor I will agree with Mr. Dwyer on that. He is much more on top of issues like this. Okay. So it's not that we're picking on you. It's that 
there's a new sheriff in town and there has been for a little while. Uh, so um, we're trying to attend to these things more effectively. But I, I, I concur, I think if, if grades have changed, then we need a drainage plan. Yeah. A professionally designed drainage plan. Yeah. I after what I just saw there, we're kind of agreeing with that because you're going to be changing, you know, you're going to be putting your your stone and your dirt and your stuff like that. And while that unto itself is not hazardous to the environment, if the runoff goes onto the driveway and into the drainage and into the wetlands, um especially when um the conservation takes a look at it may very well in need some kind of a engineer drainage system mm. other comments questions i just got a text that the uh town gis has a more current plan uh, let me see if i can pull that up or cu more current imagery okay remind me of the street address here that's 243 russell how about 233? 243. 243. Okay. 23 Russell Street. Yeah, okay. Well, the. I'm having trouble pulling up the GIS, so I'll uh, put that off, but. Uh, I was actually able to get it on my computer. Do you want me to share my screen? Sure. Let's see. All right, so this is what I have right here on the GIS. A little more cluttered. That's Could you show the 2021, the 2021? Yeah. Yep, this is the 2021 aerial imagery. And then we can go, this is the 2019, which I think is what we just had up on the Google Earth. And then this is the 21. So those material storage are still behind, yeah. when that, that still exists? Um, those bins aren't there no more now. <clears throat> Hasty took those. Yep, he took those with him. I think there was like a shed and a storage container and some other things on the property that um, that he also took with him when he when he uh, relinquished the lease. That looks like ten pounds in a five pound bag. Yep, that's uh. That's tight. That um, that's something OSHA would probably be interested in. <laughs> but it's like top. It is all fence material. Okay, <laughs> if you take that down. <laughs> Okay, so we've heard from a bunch of people, townspeople, town boards, and basically we will I'll make a motion to continue this hearing to 11.19 at 6.45 p.m. I'll second it. With the intention that Mr. Viano get rid of the stuff on the site, the debris, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and a screener, and... I believe you got an appointment with the Conservation Commission to come and take a look at different wetlands potential 
issues, or at least close to, for lack of a better term. Um, Kyla will be out there to see you, or she hasn't already made an appointment with you. Is that correct, Kyla? Yeah, and if you'd like, you can attend our meeting next week. It's on Tuesday, the 14th at 6.30, okay. if you okay, want to great. speak to the rest of the commissioners. Yeah, what yeah. day did you say this was continued to? 11, oh, I'm sorry, 11.21. 21, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that, 11.21. And you will have some kind of a, be at least trying to contact an engineer to get a formal drainage plan going you probably won't get anything for two weeks. And as long as your site is cleaned up and we can at least move forward at that point in time, not necessarily giving it a, an approval, but at least you can continue to operate and move forward in good faith that you're complying with what you're promising to do on the site plan. Mm -hmm. If you are not cleaned up, then, well, the consequences may not be desirable. Okay. When I try, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's just that um, we've got to be, get moving forward and getting something really a, a way going here because you have been a bit amiss in getting what you were, were requested to do and leave it at that. Okay. We have a motion and a second, I believe. Yep. A, any other discussion on what I what was been discussed? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. See you on the 19th. I mean, I'm, I'm I keep saying, what do I say the 19th? <laughs> November 21st. Great. Thank you. Okay. Same time, same place. And Thank make you. Sure, we'll make sure everybody gets the uh, a Zoom connection. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Comia and company. Sorry it took so long, but I thought that would be a little bit, a little bit faster. Okay. Hey, board, how are you? Um, so I, I want to um, also introduce, um, I sent the um, chair and um, Bill uh, an email saying that two staff people from PVPC will be joining us on the call, um, both Kyle and um, Aiden who started yesterday um, are our new land are, are doing the land use work. So in addition to me, um, you know, supporting the planning boards that we work with, as well as a lot of the, the various um, tasks and um, products that we've worked on over the past couple of months, they're, you know, supporting with the comprehensive planning, as well as planning board assistance, as well as, um, the the discussions about about housing and some of the work we're doing in that um, realm. Um, so I just wanted to um, you know give Aiden the opportunity to to meet the board um, as more than likely he'll be working with the board at some point in the future. Um, with that said, um, what I sent the board um, this past weekend was. Um, Kyle's work on the rules and regulations based on a document that we received a couple of years ago, I think when we tried to do this initially. Um, and so it um, is reflected um, with the document that you have there. And in addition to um, a scope of work that we talked about that um, could, you know, I think explores the idea of um, doing some analysis of um, opportunities for um, housing um, in in the town and along the corridor um, that probably could be used for a future grant application, as well as what I learned um, that came out today was district local technical assistance um, to the town. So I don't know. I don't know if the planning board chair received that, um, but. Um, what I know is that um, DLTA requests of which the housing production plan was funded through that a couple of years ago, um, you know, presumably a project like uh, the 40R um, slash an analysis of housing along the corridor or possibility of housing along the corridor is something that, you know, can be looked at. Um, but I guess, um, you know, maybe the, the first discussion point is working through the rules and regulations, or at least um, having Kyle um, maybe speak to some of the um, 
the ver the 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 um uh, uh, revisions that he's made to the um 2015 document and then you know go from there as far as um this iterative process by which i think the planning board would probably provide some comment we would turn around with a new document and then i think as um you know what as was presented in the email um this is not the entirety of it so there are still some components that we probably need to work on but i think getting some guidance from the board as to how to move forward efficiently um, with regards to this document, I think is going to be helpful too. Just a quick question. Sure. Um, obviously, Kyle Fennell, your name is easy. Mr. McMahon, how do you pronounce your first name? You're muted. Oh, I think you're still muted, Aiden. We can't hear you. No, um, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. New headset uh, came with the job. So uh, anyway, uh, my name is Aiden. You pronounce it Aiden. Ada? Aiden. 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 Like A-I-D-E-N or? Yeah. I don't know why the frame, my first name isn't showing up, uh, but it's it's not spelled A-I-D-E-N, but it's pronounced exactly the same. So just picture that spelling. Okay. okay. That's, that's right. Because you know, like, the way it shows up, like your first name is well, yeah, I, I, know. I, I do want to and try. It's my first initial and then my last name. I'm going to have to figure out how to change that. But um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Aiden, thank, thank you. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah, I would think we want to get moving on the rules and regulations for the planning board because it seems like we've been discussing that for a long time and we need to get that formalized because there's a lot of things that there's a few things that we do that are unwritten, but are probably in those. And we want to have them written down so that we're operating on the consistent set of rules and regulations. Yes. Don't forget to tell people that they should do something that we meant they should do. <laughs> Basically, <clears throat> yeah. But at least it'll be written down so they can see them someplace that this is how we base our decisions and this is what we are expecting compliance to be. So because the three of the three old timers here aren't going to be here forever. And mm -hmm. we want to make sure that the new people, once we're replaced, operate from basically the same set of rules. So, Mr. Chair, if uh, I may, I'll, I can share my screen and we can walk through the first eight pages that um, we started revising of the draft. Okay. Um, uh, Word document should be visible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me just move everybody out of my way here. Excuse me. Uh, so this is, again, based on a, a draft originally from 2015, I believe. So um, working through just the first uh, five sections, um, introduction, organization, meetings, preliminary review, and special permit review, uh, we began to bring in some text from uh, Pioneer Valley uh, kind of model uh, format that I believe the planning board had seen uh, a couple months prior. Um, so we start with our first editions highlighted on page three, uh, just expanding on some of the board duties, uh, adding uh, subsection F, review and approve site plans when applicable, G, recommend scenic roads designation, and H, administer special rules um, granted authority within Hadley zoning bylaws, uh, identifying home occupation, erosion sediment control, and inclusionary zoning based on that draft um, table of contents um, right there. Um, so uh, that's our first kind of addition. If that, um, I would like to pause here just to get a sense from the board. Uh, if that's, if those, 
first three things are first uh, and foremost accurate, if you can confirm that for me. And then um, curious if we want to follow this format uh, that we're outlining in subsection H, kind of following the table of contents and just referring um, the reader to those specific sections. Just Section H will be considerably longer when you put in all of the other reviews and stuff that, that we have in the zoning bylaw, that's all. Exactly. I mean, you're just getting into it, so I don't want to try to list them all right now, but you're right. Yes. Just so uh, perhaps just uh, in general feedback, just thinking about um, yeah, it's kind of the blanket, just all applicable uh, statement, and then just leaving it from there. And of course, we'll just start expanding on those sections. Um, I agree it starts to get cumbersome if we start listing everything. Uh, Okay. But we can move along if those look all right. Um, just some quick th things to confirm here. Um, in section two, uh, planning board, five members elected at town elections, uh, confirming that you all are given five year terms. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. All right. And then. Uh, majority of the quorum first meeting on each calendar is when you are selecting your officers, chair, and clerk. That, that's that's not true. Okay. Can you verify? The, uh, the confirm chair that and clerk are elected after the town elections. First meeting after the town election. Correct. Okay. Thank you. After town I wouldn't election. put a date in there because they moved the town elections a couple of times. So I just maybe making that statement after the uh, annual town elections. All right. And that's an annual, yeah. Yes, thank you. I will rectify that. Uh, and then on that next um, chair and clerk, are you selected? That's annually, so that would ch uh, change number four. You know, when, when this was first brought up, uh, yeah. you know, Four consultants ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's so not Hadley. Yes. Um, I, I think it's it probably is just something. Just, something. just delete it. Yeah. So strike this. Do you delete number four in its entirety. All right. Can do. Well, the reason we say that is. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I'll say the truth. Um, I've been on the board for 45 years. For, for, I'm sorry, 40 years. And I am probably been chair for 35 of them. Plus, Mr. Dwyer has been on the, the board for probably, I would say, 38 years, probably chair for 35 of them. Right. So we're close, something close to those numbers. Or clerk. Yeah. That's fair. We have a dictatorship. <laughs> it's a, no, it's we a have wealth free, of institutional knowledge. That's they keep sure. getting reelected. Yeah. 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 We have free and fair elections each yeah. year, just like. So you say. So you say. <laughs> uh, I mean, fair enough. So uh, I mean, moving right along, um, uh, one addition uh, that we, we wanted to clarify. Um, we added section 3.8 on absences. Uh, and this is some uh, language regarding, I believe it's the Mullins rule. Um, so this was included. I don't know if the, the town has accepted this particular MGL. You know, I know yeah. some. Oh, yeah. You have. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. So yeah, there's a meeting, you watch the meeting on key tape, you're allowed to vote. Yeah. Right. Yes. So then we'd want to include this language. We'll keep that. If the board, if the board is in agreement with the text, I can zoom in for everybody if we want to read it. Um, no. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's basically, that's what I said, that if you miss that meeting, and you watch the tape, you're allowed to vote. Right. But 
And I could say I've done that. I think I had to sign some form that I had. Right. Yep. We even have a we have a form for it. The uh, David Nixon when he was town administrator, we had, this that was when we adopted it, and he promulgated a form at that time. Does that need to be uh, referenced directly in this section, or is it? No, I don't think so. It's just no. certify in writing, but we have a a form for that. Yeah, right. but you, you go to write it. You go to certify in writing, and there is a form for it. I mean, that's, says, that's close enough. Yeah, it says it, it. at which yeah, testimony or other. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, we yeah. could we could look at adding an appendix of forms to this. True. Yeah, that would be appropriate, I believe. Um, all right, so 3.8 looks good, and we can move right along. Um, I wanted to confirm this uh, value for the preliminary review fee. It's not included in Section 8.3, which is uh, your relevant fees table, uh, but I wanted to confirm um, if this value is accurate, $100. We don't usually charge anything for informal review. All right, then we can make sure to re remove that. So I think this is also an opportunity in your rules and regulations. I don't know how the, the planning board may be looking at fees or you know, a review of fees, um, but typically, um, especially now, if if, you know, we get to a point with these rules and regulations where you feel comfortable in adopting them as the board's rules and regulations, um, putting a fee schedule in this document that may be current fees. Um, and what would you would typically do is, um, if it came time to address or revise the fees, you, you know, do something similar where you'd open a public hearing to identify those fees. They don't have to be done through town meeting and they can be done through the planning board. The only thing about um, preliminary, go ahead. just a quick question on preliminary review. We highly encourage preliminary reviews for almost anything because it makes submission a whole lot more uh, smoother when come people, as opposed to coming in without a preliminary review. So we get to I'm, say I'm, I'm not i'm not sure we want to try to charge for preliminary review because that seems it seems to me we would be discouraging that just my two cents yeah now. and several months ago we went through a site plan review on a piece of property off of uh, coolidge coolidge bridge and uh, we spent a number of hours on it and uh you know you had to go before the uh ZBA and we finally approved everything and hours were spent and nothing has been done with that property. It was perhaps cavalier, cavalier, whatever that word is brought to us. Is there any way that we can put a, some type of fee in place if we spend time on something and then somebody doesn't do something? If, we, if, we, if we've <laughs> gone through site plan review and made a approval, I don't think they can because there could be things beyond their control that yeah. prevent them from going forward. Would you go back to 4.1, please? I don't think you want to call it informal meetings because okay. to me, that sounds, I mean, the, the title is the only thing I have a concern with. Informal meetings sounds like Mr. Dwyer, Mr. Zagrandic, and I are meeting outside of a planning board and discussing something and that's an open meeting violation right. they want to call it just give it a different title that's all i'm saying but i what your 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 intent there is absolutely correct all right. informal review at public meeting or something yeah informal review would be fine yeah uh -huh. that's better All right. Thank you, board. I will scratch the preliminary review fee section. Uh, moving on to section 5.4, special permit application procedures. Just wanted to clarify that applications forms available strictly uh, during regular business hours in the town clerk's office. 
generally, no, they are uh, available uh, upon request to the planning, planning board office. Board. Yeah. All right. During regular Zoom hours. Yes, <laughs> Zoom office hours, right? Anytime. Uh, number of copies for our uh, special permit. Whoa, 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 you're going too fast. Sorry. Here at 5-6. Five, five, go back to 5-5. Five, five. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Date of submission? So <clears throat> we don't do it that way. All right. Please that is what the law says. But um, it, we it done, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, the the this was something we got into with the prior town clerk, who likewise had been in the job for decades. But um, the town clerk's not equipped to review an application for completeness. Okay. So we ask that the application be filed at a regular planning board meeting. So they can be reviewed for completeness. And then we uh, then we approve, we, we give the applicant the okay to file with the town clerk. Right. And and we we will we will they will uh, they will file with us and tell us what they want to do, give us the application. We will set a public hearing date, typically that meeting, like we did tonight. With a person that wants to have a preliminary, a uh, very small subdivision, right? And because of the filing fees, we used to have a flat filing fee, right? However, legal notices have gone out of sight, and we found out we were charging half the price of the filing fee for what the the legal notice was costing us, and because the legal notices are all over the place and changing so rapidly. I will send a notice to the newspaper, get a price and add a percentage onto that price and let the applicant know and email them back their application so that they can then file it with the town clerk. In the meantime, the public hearing date has already been scheduled. Right. Okay. So it's, it's a roundabout way. I know that this is what the law reads, but it, it, it turned into a disaster when we tried to do that. So basically, they come to us, they file, we set a date, I find out the fee, I email them back the application with the fee that they need to pay onto the application. They then file it with the town clerk and go forward. You could probably work that around to say something like the application will be submitted to the planning board for pre-approval and then filed with the town clerk. Right. That would be consistent with, it's probably more consistent with how the statute reads to say it that way. But um, basically, we don't want the town clerk accepting something that is incomplete because that starts the clock running on approval and we'd rather catch that before it gets more than a foot in the door. And that state rig is probably designed more for towns that have a full-time, you know, trained staff, whereas we're for all intents and purposes volunteers. Right. So it works in Northampton where the clerk then Right. Calls the planning board office and says, come and pick up the application that got filed this morning. Right. Uh, so so uh, if I if we quickly just review that first line, a little addition there, um, if that follows with what you're saying, Mr. Dwyer, and then uh, just clarify, is it dated? Upon the date of the planning board meeting or is yeah. it dated? When we did actually... it from when we approve it for, for completeness. Okay, so then. First sentence say the application shall be submitted with the planning board at a regularly scheduled meeting. 
or no? Yeah. Catch. Okay. Um, I believe I've got notes here that uh, capture the sentiment, so I'll I'll make sure to clean that up a little bit. I don't want to necessarily spend too much time wordsmithing if that's all right with everybody. Yep. Yep. I, th I think what I'll add to is, um, yeah. you know, I think that what has been determined to, to both in the draft that was initially presented, as well as uh, Bill, you alluded to it, was that there is a particular process that's spelled out in Chapter 40, Section 9. Um, just so that the language is clear, we understand your process by which you determine the completeness and then how you file it on behalf of the applicant um, when you know it's time to do that, um, when you are satisfied with the application. Um, I think we can spell it out in the process, but we also wanna make sure that it's not saying something that is uh, in conflict with um, that particular chapter. So I think right. between Kyle and I, we can um, figure out you know, a way to, to communicate that. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, go back for a sec. Oh, yeah, right there. Uh, 5.6. Right. Uh, and electronic copies. We all we want a full electronic set of everything. We we mm -hmm. don't need six standard size copies. We three will do. If we get the electronic, we only electronic. need three copies. And that could be PDF or approved other format. Let's just say PDF because yeah. we don't have yes the capacity to handle other formats. Right. Okay. Um, Portable document format. <clears throat> uh, okay. So three standard size and then including PDF format. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't need it to fo be folded to fit into a letter size file folder. Some of these, especially for site plan approval, it's uh, it could be 30 pages and we get rolled plans. And right. that's okay. We have storage and we have a, a large format scanner. But, um, yeah, we really like to, we can avoid scanning by getting it in, in PDF up front. So I think what we should also note is that with the change of some of these numbers that you probably had there before, um, there may be an opportunity in the future to amend your zoning bylaw to ensure that there is consistency between yes. the rules and regulations and your zoning. Yeah, yeah. Some, there's a, some of the zoning bylaws are more generic and some got into an awful lot of technical detail. For, for yeah, for instance, in your site plan approval section, each application for site plan approval shall be submitted to the planning board um, and accompanied by nine copies of the site plan. So, I mean, there it is very specific, right? So, um, you know, keeping note and and I think we can determine where maybe these changes can be made and just keep a running list of those. Yeah. We don't want to kill too many trees. <laughs> not necessary anymore is it um all right so, so uh five seven uh filing fee just directs you to a later section um 8.3 uh with a table uh consultants also directs you to a, a future section is that like peer review or is that uh yes yeah, yeah. um I believe all this is unchanged from the latest draft worked on previously. Uh, and I believe there is one one additional section that I missed, I apologize. Uh, yes, 5.3, uh, 
Uh, that is a new text um, just from uh, the PVPC model that we provided a few months back, uh, just defining applicant. Uh, I just wanted to go over that, make sure that the board was in agreement. Um, nowhere in the document was that term defined, so thought it would be valuable to uh, insert that. Okay. Yeah, there is no town planner, so you have to put planning board instead of town planner. Yep. And make it required that all new applications be reviewed by the planning board. It is required. It is required. Okay. Uh, so that was, yep. I believe, all of our additions that we got through up to this point. Uh, if we want to just quickly just, um, we can pause there and bring back the next round. Um, uh, I just want to acknowledge it is 831. I didn't know if there was other business or if we want to proceed tonight. Good job. Thank you. Yep. Moving forward. So we'll work on the next sections. Uh, there are not too uh, cumbersome and then we'll also be including some of the model language that we have from other communities uh, in terms of um, the home occupation by uh, rules and regulations inclusionary zoning uh, and any others that you identify that we need to bring in from Hadley rules and regs thank you and you haven't already noticed, uh, we are probably different than a lot of planning boards you want to deal with in other towns. It's it's quite all right. Uh, as I've said uh, in past meetings, it's it's um, I find this is one of the best boards to learn with. So I appreciate everybody's patience and support. Uh, you can you can ask Mr. Comey how many, <laughs> for lack of a better term, how many ways we have paved that other towns yeah. have, this is what we've heard, and I don't know how true this is, but what's Hadley do on that one? Um, not a lot, but there are some, and that that's not by design. It's, uh, I'm not sure why it is. Uh, I've been here 10 years, and I'm, Joe Zagronik still considers me a newcomer. <laughs> <laughs> he still wipes my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when I said I was here 40, been on the board 40 years, I'm only number two on the seniority list. <laughs> Quite a feat. Uh, well, thank you all. Uh, I'll have uh, the next version at our next meeting. Uh, we'll try to get that to you as soon as, as, soon as possible. And please uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any additional thoughts. If you get a chance to look at it, I appreciate your feedback. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. So... Um, Ken, on the DLTA, I yeah. found that I got an email at my personal email address this morning announcing the grant round. I forwarded it to the rest of the board. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, that's an opportunity for the board. I think if there's other projects or um, bylaws that you may be wanting to look at, I think you've used DLTA in the past um, to your benefit. Um, to get some work done. Um, but um, I think as I we were discussing at the last meeting, the conversation about maybe looking at a scope of work, um, at least looking at an opportunity to understand um, the development along the Route 9 corridor, particularly related to um, the um, hotel site um, where the... Um, ZBA uh, denied that comprehensive permit. So, you know, that where we we will be working on 40R and other communities um, this upcoming year. Um, so, uh, you know, this scope follows kind of that lead. It's not um, as um, specific as, you know, we would probably be working with a committee in determining um, where data, what types of data sets you would want to see, 
um, with regards to those particular parcels and the abutting parcels and you know surrounding those parcels, um, but all in the vein of presumably looking at this and then um, possibly filing or um, submitting a permit uh, application to um, housing livable communities for 40R district. Um, but like I said, at the last meeting, it is doing the due diligence of determining whether or not that particular site or parcels um, may be something that the planning board may be wanting to take the lead on uh, um, examining um, you know, that type of overlay. Um, so that that's what is presented in that scope, whether or not you, you know you decide to want to continue looking at um, that particular um, parcel and uh, looking at 40R. Um, that's you know at the at the board's um, pleasure. Well, I have one request. Uh, we have recently uh, accepted some. Uh, immigrant people under the emergency degree by our governor. Do those people qualify as our number in our affordable housing? I would say uh, no. That's a commercial relationship between the hotel owner and the state. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm not sure. Too. And in fact, if anything, it's like Sunderland, where Sunderland had housing, had multiple apartments that were that met every criteria of affordability, except that they weren't uh, deed restricted, and so none of them counted. Well, then it should be a zoning violation if that's the case. It's, all, it it's a hotel; it's an allowed use. Oh, it's not allowed use. No sprinklers. They're permanent residents there for at least three years. So, bit of transient. I, th I think the state is coming in on those things and overruling different stuff. I'm not sure. But, okay. I'm not sure, that, I'm not sure that's a road we want to go down either. I, I, I'm probably correct. So, uh, my two cents on this is uh, that I would like to keep looking at this and, um, fleshing out a little more. We we have a concept of what a 40-yard district looks like, but as always, the devil is in the details. And we haven't really gotten that far into the the weeds on you know what it would look like. Apparently we can have some design standards. We can prescribe uh, affordability minimums mm -hmm. um but all of this is just concept right now uh, so i i think we owe it to ourselves and the community to go a little bit further down this path um to find out will this work for us i i agree with what mr dwyer says the only concern i have is that would a 40R be a required application out of this study. We're trying to we're trying to set criteria and you know where is it appropriate, et cetera. But if the criteria is that out of after we do this uh, review for lack of a better term or study, okay, now where are you going to apply you need to apply? I'm not sure that. We want to commit to that. What we want to do is study is it appropriate and where and what's the criteria. But I don't want to be to have our hands tied that you now shall apply to something. Well, if it's available for 40R, is it then available for a friendly 40B? Because or not? Well, I think the development that was going to go there was a friendly 40B. Yeah, but it wasn't zoned for that. So if we change the zoning to allow for 40 R's, then it, then is it available for a 40 B? Is that excluded? You can still do a 40 B if there were maybe criteria 
I think there would I I, I think that there would be um pushback because presumably the 40r or whatever criteria you would set for that parcel um could be handled by a review by the planning board um rather than going through the zba for a comprehensive permit so really 40b is used when there's either hardship as to trying to meet the um standards that would be required in the zoning bylaw but also because you're over the 10% threshold, you know, there may have been a, an idea there um, that that presumably was um, the permitting path of that particular developer. But Mike, okay. in, in this whole concept, uh, you're looking at 40R in relation to the Econo Lodge, but if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, but Kim, it, Ken is trying to promote a 40R area of zoning much bigger than the Econo Lodge, more like probably the whole mall. I don't know. Is that what Ken was promoting? That's, I don't think he was that's promoting it. I, he was suggesting it as a. He was suggesting it, yes. Example, an, an option. It uh, was. Yeah, I think it was a suggestion based on um, looking at um, your master plan, understanding that along the corridor and the housing production plan, too, that there could be opportunities for mixed use. Um, and one of the ideas in the master plan was to discuss looking at uses, additional uses for the Hampshire Mall parcels. Um, so that was the idea of looking at possible density increases within the corridor um, through this particular study. Um, obviously, you know, the I think the conversation that you had with the gentleman from the state um, regarding 40R, um, there's, that's not to say that the town couldn't put forward um, an application for a 40R district for that particular parcel, but I think it probably would you know, be looked at differently than other towns that have looked at a holistic, you know, corridor or identified abutting parcels that presumably could be developed into mixed uses or housing. Is, is the housing production plan, is that essentially Ken Comey's housing production plan or? Mike, no, it's not. <laughs> curious, just curious. We, <laughs> we have the committee. We, we could change we could change the name of it. <laughs> um, uh, and do, do you know anything about the South Hadley where the old big Y was? Yeah, and, I just heard that news. And uh, how how large of a 40R was that? Did they buttonhole it right to that site or did they see my concern is if we did a strip a zone beyond you know with multiple properties you could get multiple you know that would overwhelm us and i'm not sure that would fly with the town but i think going one by one saying all right let's try one building site and that works and see how the town and the infrastructure and the school system you know see how that uh, you know i don't know that's my i agree i agree mike mark you're hitting it right on the head yeah. It seems like we've been going around this loop for quite a while now. Yes, uh, I, I'm not saying Kim is trying to promote it. It's his holistic approach. I love that word that he throws in there all the time. I think it's his due diligence to bring it to our attention to consider. Okay. Yeah. But if we don't bite, the, the worm after four or five meetings and maybe you brought it to our attention enough times. But well, I think he's getting a certain degree of positive feedback, but yes. not unanimity. <laughs> so, um, um, so how, how would you, how do you visualize DLTA working with that 40R scope of work that you proposed? Can that be the basis of a, an application? That definitely could be. 
Um, I think, you know, one of the things that Jim had pointed out is typically with DLTA, there is some sort of action that the town would need to take with the work that, you know, had been explored. Um, typically when that when we did the housing production plan for the town, um, the um, the action was the town passed it. So, you know, there is this question mark about um, looking at regulations or zoning that may be something that's arrived at after the process. Um, I think that that's, you know, could be just what it is, is possibly a zoning bylaw amendment that the town could either, you know, take or have discussions about, but that probably is the product. Um, I think what will end up being a good application is maybe the thought that um, there would be a serious look at, you know, this possibility of mm -hmm. a, a bylaw being drafted and, and at least acted upon. And while I don't think it is a clear and present danger, there is always the possibility that a property owner could introduce a proposal to rezone my parcel and my neighbor's parcel into a 40 yard district. It would be a lot of work, but um, it could happen. And I think part of being a planning board is getting ahead of these issues. So. So why can't we propose the 40R for the Econo Lodge at the next town meeting? Why do so, we have to go through a study determining which part of town's favorable or not and just do it and, it, and use the educational form as a means to introducing the town of the concept and why would we be good to the town? Why do we have to keep going around and around and around? So the, the big problem that I understand from talking with the guy from Boston is when you have a failed 40B, you turn around and do a 40R for the same site, you don't get any goodies from the state. Uh, yeah. The well, funding, the, the fun, funding per unit would come from a 40R that involved more than just the Econo Lodge. And if it did involve more than just the Econo Lodge, then we would probably get the per unit funding for the Econolodge as well. But if we just try to do a, a swap out here, uh, it's a lot of work to do the 40R and there's no gain for it or no no monetary gain for it. Um, Except taxes. Well, they're paying taxes anyway. Yeah, but. Yeah. I just wish the work were away. We could move this along quickly. And it seems like the bureaucracy is holding us back. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I think you're right. They again, as I understand it, we can't we can't take a 40 B 40 R bylaw to town meeting without getting Boston's blessing on it. And right, because that, as, as Bill said, that's when you're getting your incentive. Your, How much is the incentive? It's like uh, the free. I have to look at my fact sheet. A um, couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe? It, it's it's a hundred thousand dollars up front, and then it's based on so much per unit. If you if you're over so many units, you get you get more. The more units you put in, the more money you get. So basically, you're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars on applications, lawyers' fees, blah blah blah, over the next nine months. And you're going to end it up anyway. <laughs> well, the the application needs approval from the board of selectmen, the planning board, and I'm not sure if there's anybody else. And then a zoning district that's approved by the town. Well, the zoning district would have got to be at, after the app. That, that's to get to the that's to get to Boston. Yeah, you, you need those two boards' approval. Is that correct? Um, I have to look at the application. I think so. Let me look. And then 
once Boston says it's good, then you go to town meeting. Well, yeah, I, I, I think the scale, uh, I, I think you're an order of magnitude off on the uh, upfront expenses, Mike. Okay. The town, you mean? Yeah, the upfront expenses, uh, upfront cost to the town of getting a 40R to town meeting is not, what did you say, 200000 Well, that's uh, what the state's going to give us, I'm assuming. So what if we said, keep your money? And yeah, just we wanted, certainly... to move for, wanted to move forward with it. Well, we can't move forward on a 40R without getting the state approval. So... What's the point of saying, but keep your money at that point? But do we need a zoning change prior to getting the 40R? No. You that is the 40R. No. That is the yeah. 40R as a zoning change. Yeah, thing. exactly. So we can invest, let's let's say on the outside, and I think it's I think even this is probably off, but let's say we invest twenty thousand in consultants get approval from Boston to submit a 40R zoning article and it fails, we're out to 20,000. Yeah. We have gone through the exercise of, we've gone through the exercise. We have demonstrated our interest. Uh, and if it, if it's not reciprocated by town meeting, so be it. We've had stuff rejected in the past. Um, I mean, we've we spent forty. We've spent forty thousand trying to study if Russell School's worth anything about three or four times already, right? Fortunately, <laughs> well, that yeah. Fortunately, that's a different department that is yeah, yeah. running that show. I just like to move forward with it. And let let the state talk, let the state talk to us because if we don't do something, it's going to be two or three years. Well, that's what exactly we're doing something and the state you know, at some point, I believe the state will be engaged in it. It's it's not that they're waiting. It's not that they're going to sit on their hands until they get yeah. a complete application filed. If we get, you know, get a, a sense of, uh, well, we'd really we don't want to do Lowe's to Home Depot. We don't want to do anything on the north side, but we want to look at. Econo Lodge and Hampshire Mall and maybe down as far as Howard Johnson's. Um, we float that by and see if uh, if that's enough to uh, generate reciprocal interest from Boston. We can go. We can go in small steps here. We don't have to. Yeah, um, I agree. We're not, we're not committing to. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're committing by by entering the process. We're committing to follow through on the process, uh, but it really does come down to what town meeting says. Exactly. I think we want to apply for this grant when it when when we. That's my two cents. We should definitely look at it, and we're going to wait two or three years to get a forty R in place. The alternative being what? Putting spending twenty thousand dollars up front, get it, get an application, and then go for it. Yeah, we can so, talk to these people. That's what we're talking about. Going ahead, going ahead with it. You know, the yeah. other alternative is to float an application to allow uh, apartments by right in the business district. Um with an affordability uh, with the uh, with the inclusionary zoning applicable right but um, but we don't know what we would get if we did that and that's maybe not a step we want to make right now Is it possible, Ken, I don't know, to say we're creating a 40-hour zone that's, I don't know, I'll just say 
uh, 100 acres, but we only want to allow X number of units in there. I mean, or once we have that, it can be developed to its maximum potential and we could get, you know, a thousand units. I mean, I think it would be a pretty crazy developer to build a thousand units, but I'm just saying that's, that's, I think the fear is that the larger area we open, if it were maxed out, you know, we, we'd look like Framingham instead of right. you know, Hadley. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the question here is whether or not, um, I, Bill, I think put it plainly is if the town wanted to look at additional density along the route and not rely on incentives from the state, then presumably you would want to just rezone or allow for apartments or um, any sort of um, multifamily along the corridor. Um, you know, this is an opportunity and to look at the smart growth districts, which ha happen to also be mixed uh, mixed use, which you can also spell into development programs where you're not going to necessarily say that 100% of these parcels are going to be um, housing um, because you have design standards, you have other types of site work that would need to happen with those particular parcels. It makes it easier to develop housing, um, but I think if there is a a close look at um, certain parcels that you know, um, not necessarily the Econo Lodge, but others along the corridor, because that's where you've identified the additional um, density. Um, that you know, the um, you wouldn't need to develop wholly um, housing, so you you could take a look at mixed uses, um, which would imply that there are other uses that are going to be required um, in addition to the housing component. What do we need to apply for a grant, Ken? Um, this particular DLTA grant is a narrative, um, you know, a question. Uh, it's a series of questions and um, I think as has happened before, um, I, I think either Bill put it together or a combination of planning board members maybe looked at it and submitted it, but it is not a uh, heavy lift at all. It's a narrative for the DLTA. Okay. Yeah, we can take a look at the application and uh, Ken's uh, Ken's proposal. Um, there's scope of work. Yeah, that's a very general scope of work um, in regards to doing, um, you know, examining 40R for other community. Okay. All right. Can we get you back for our first meeting in December? Sure. That's uh, December 5th. Yeah. We'll try not to have as much else. We, we just had a hard time reining in and getting that guy to get his application together so um we we didn't want to delay the hearing any longer than we already had but uh we do apologize for you're, you're all alone on the fifth and you will be all alone except for general information fifth yeah fifth, yeah sure all right. Okay. Well, thanks, Ken. I didn't mean to suggest you were uh, trying to get some glory here. Oh. <laughs> That's not my intent. Well, he he has he, he no he's he's the the 
deputy head of his department. He's got all the glory he can stand down at PVPC. And Iden, what's your story in 50 words or less? You, you, this is your first day on the job? Second, second day second. on the job. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, yeah, I'm from Massachusetts, um, but I just got back from Texas. I was there for four years. I went to graduate school there and I, I worked for a year as a municipal planner for the small city of Buda, right outside of Austin. Right outside of Austin. Um, yeah, but, you know, happy to be here. Buda limestone. Buda limestone. <laughs> That's right. I got it. Lead article, by the way, in the in the Boston Sunday Globe, the uh, the building permits in the United States. Uh, what state and what area in that state has by far the largest number of building permits? Austin, Texas. Oh yeah. Yep. In Massachusetts is way way down, and Boston is way down. But it goes Austin, Charlotte, Orlando, Houston, Dallas, Denver, Phoenix. So we better do a study and see what's wrong with that picture. <laughs> I, I, we better adjourn. We better adjourn before we say something wrong. Or I say something wrong. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome aboard, Aiden. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have one bill to pay to the Daily Hampshire Gazette for the legal notice. $486.62. Motion to pay. Wow. They go up every 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 month. Well, what was second. the amount? <laughs> 486.62. That's why I said we, we can't put a, a flat fee down because these legal notices are floating. You know, they used to always be about 230 bucks. Well, that's one publication now if we're lucky. Somebody's anyway, going to motion to pay. Industry and laugh. So so motion, motion to pay, pay and Mark has seconded. seconded. A second. In, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Okay. Anything else? I have nothing else. Anybody else have anything? Thank you, Not? Ken. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Aiden. Good Motion job. Thank adjourn. you, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Let's Tommy. get a 40R in a car wash. <laughs> Motion <laughs> to adjourn. I'm serious. Motion We're all going to be dead. Nothing's going to happen. Move. And I'm a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you, Tom. Oh, do you have anything, Tom? No. Okay, good. Thank you. All right.